Hello everyone, this is Matthew Yu. Today I'm going to talk about how to use Power BI to connect to Oracle databases. So Oracle database has been one of the most popular databases that people use, and people want to use Power BI to connect to the database. And we received there are some questions or issues regarding to that. So today I'm going to talk about uh, some topics. So the first, I'm going to walk, through, uh, walk you through a demo. So if you have a new laptop uh, that install Power BI, how to install this Oracle ODBC and to verify and connect to a database. And I believe some of you might have some issues uh, when using the database. So I'm going to provide some general suggestions or troubleshooting guide to help you through this. So uh, before I go into the demo, so I'm, uh, first there are some assumptions here. So uh, first is all of the UI services document and like user agreement. They are as of October 20, uh, 2020. And in the demo computer, I'm going to use Windows 10 and the Power BI will be the Windows Store version latest, the October version. So let's get started. All right, here I have a new laptop and with the Power BI desktop already installed and launched. So the first thing I'm going to do is to install this Oracle connector, which is not included in the Power BI desktop. So I'm going to click the Get Data button, and it will list all the sources that I have for, for my data. So I'm going to type in Oracle to find the Oracle. OK, here it says Oracle database. I'm going to click Connect. So in this case, I do not have a look have a connector installed, so the system will complain and show me that, hey, the Oracle uh, client is not installed. So I'm going to click Learn More to go to the page. So here, I open this Microsoft uh, Oracle connector page, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit. So first, I'm going to read some, uh, basically, the notes here. So it says here, it says, uh, please note, your Oracle database has to be Oracle 9 or later. So I think most of you, the for the Oracle database, it should be the it should be uh, more than the version 9. <clears throat> I'm going to go to here and download the version. Since in my laptop, I'm using the 64-bit of Power BI desktop. So I'm going to click and download the 64-bit of the Oracle client. So here, you enter this Oracle's uh, external website, and this is basically the download page. And what I'm going to do so is to find and to download the ODAC connector. So when at the time when you see this video, this page might look different, and there might be some new version goes released. And the one trick I can tell you is you can always find one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest files that you can download here. So let's see here. This says I'm using the 12.0, 12.2 version. And you can see this is only 2 megabytes, this is 77 megabytes. And I can scroll down, and you can see here, oh, this one is huge. It is uh, 400 megabytes. And this is one that I will, I will going to be needing. And you can see the other is basically the older version, 12.1. And basically, so my trick is basically if you see this Oracle, and you see for this version, there are multiple ones. You are going to download one, the biggest one. So I'm going to click and download. So one of the things here is uh, you have to review and accept your the Oracle license agreement. So after your thorough review of the agreement, you click the download button. And the next thing you can see here is it will promote you to do a sign-in and basically to in, before you can download. So you can, if you don't have an Oracle account, you can click this create account button. It is free to download for sure. So because in this case, I already have a account already registered, I'm just going to click sign-in button. Once I click sign-in, you can see from my internet browser right now on the on the bottom left side, it is already start downloading. So I'm going to pause the video and wait for this to download. After the downloading, I can click this file that I already downloaded. And the first thing I'm going to do is to unzip this file. I right click and click extract all. And it might take a while. All right, after I unzip this file, I'm going to click this unzipped version. And you will find something that is called setup, and this have this little database icon. And I'm going to double click this icon to launch the inst uh, installation. I click yes, 
and basically it's checking some of the basics here. Once it finishes checking, you will see the screen. So basically first you can select the language that you prefer. This is by default English. I'm going to click next. And here you can just go to next. There's nothing we want to check. And here, this is important. So basically here it's going to tell you which is the path that you are going to install this Oracle. So you can access, you can use the default path and but you, you you have to remember this because later if we have some any troubleshooting we are going to use this pass so in this case uh, i'm going to change that to oracle and also after you do that also remember this what is your software location and what is your oracle base i'm going to click next and basically that is good i'm also going to click next and next and i don't need okay now it is doing the prerequisite checking and installation. So I'm going to skip here. Basically, you can just wait and click next until the end. All right, so after several minutes of waiting, this is already finished. So I'm going to just click close and this basically can say here, it says the installation of the Oracle client was successful. I'm just going to click close. And I'm going to go back to Power BI. I'm going to restart Power BI. I'm going to now save this. So you can also reboot your laptop just in case. But let's see here, I'm going to just reboot Power BI. Once rebooted, I'm going to do the same thing. Get data, and I'm going to search for Oracle. All right, Oracle database, going to click Connect. And you can see in this page, basically, it says the recommended provider is not installed, but you can continue with Oracle, uh, your current provider. So this is basically very common. So even you install the correct one or the latest version, sometimes Power Bear will, will, will also complain, but we can ignore this message and go into here and connect. And this is basically the Oracle page. Let's talk about the connection a bit. So basically, the most traditional way is your IT department might have sent you a TNS file. So a TNS file basically looks like this. It says uh, the name always has to be TNS names.ORA file. And basically, you can see it's ORA file. So the most traditional way how to do this is basically you are going to place this uh, Oracle, uh, this ORA file into this pass. So this pass basically when you install the Oracle, we were asking you to uh, to remember the pass. So I'm going to basically to show you how that looks like. I'm going to click basically it's added with Notepad plus plus. But if you don't have, you can click open with and in the more apps you can find Notepad. I'm not going to click OK. And this is how a traditional TNS file looks like. So basically, it tells you what is the address of the server. In here, I use some fake ones just for the demo purpose. And basically, what is the server and the server ID and all that stuff. And then basically, this is server 1 and this is server 2. They use basically a line to, to break. And basically, what you're going to do once you receive this from your IT department, the most traditional way is to go back to the path that you installed Okay, now I'll, I go into the my C drive Oracle, which is the path that I installed earlier. So basically, I'm going to click product and I'm going to click my version and I'm going to click client number one. And then basically, you can go into the network and admin. This is a path that you are going to install. Of course, depending on where your Oracle home is, your path and the version, your path might be different. So I'm going to copy this file that my IT department sent to me, and I'm going to paste here. And that's pretty much it. So just double check. This is the name of my server. It's basically the nickname is uh, onprim1. I'm just going to copy this onprim1 on as my, yeah, copy to the clipboard. Okay, go back to Power BI. I'm going to paste here. And if uh, you have some completed queries, you can also type in there, like select and from. Basically here, I'm not going to put in any query. I'm going to click OK to connect. 
in this case because I'm using a, like a fake one. So basically it will fail for sure. But this is basically using the traditional way to do that. But there's another, uh, so the reason for this, like I personally dislike is because uh, you have to upload the same TNS file into your Power BI Gateway server if you are going to schedule the uh, uh, schedule refresh, and you have to also copy the same file. So there's a lot of work, and you can check my other video on the Power BI Gateway to basically you have to match the nickname. So I recommend the other way. Basically, instead instead of uh, copy and pasting the TNS file, you can ignore that. Basically. Uh, what you can do is let's start over. Once IT department sends you this file, you can open this. And once you open, what you can do is basically you can check my note here. This is this is basically I'm going to expand this a little bit. So this is basically the format you're going to do. You're going to put in host column and port slash SID. So in this case, basically one of the if you can check my case here. Uh, basically, this is a host. Basically, I copy the host into uh, into my connection string. Basically, let's let's do this together. So I'm going to go back to the TNS file. I'm going to copy the host first. I'm going to paste here, Control plus V. I'm going to type a column. Once it's done, what it, I'm going to search for my port number. This is always a number. So in my case, it's 1521. I'm going to copy this number, Control plus C and Control plus V. All right. So once it's done, I'm going to type in a slash and from right to the left slash. And I'm going to look for the ice ID of my connect connecting data. Basically, it is sometimes it's a string, sometimes it's a number. So in this case, it's cells DB. I'm going to copy here and I'm going to paste. So this basically you can use the same string to connect to the Oracle database and basically it is equal to you use the TNS file. So basically you just paste what is in the TNS file into the connection string and you're going to click the OK to connect. And this is easier because on the database, on the gateway side, it is easier to set up. So I personally use this for all my Oracle database connection and I also recommend you to do this and you can click OK to connect. Now we completed this setup. Now let's show a real case on how the connection look like. We are going to click the Get Data button. Type in Oracle. Click the Oracle database and connect. Here you still see the error message, but just a compatibility issue. We can ignore that and click uh, go on. Here I type in my server uh, string, the port and basic the server name, and I click OK to connect. Here I put in my username and the password under the database tab, because this is a database credential. I click connect. Here on the screen, you see that that is successful. You can see all the schemas and the table you have the access to. And you can also see if you expand the folder, which is the schema, you can see what the table is beneath. And basically here is the conclusive demo. And I will put the troubleshoot guide in a separate video.